Hello again, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. On the uh, hazardous weather graphics, there are no watches, no warnings, and no advisories here out for the state uh, through tomorrow, anyway. Uh, I will mention that uh, some of the rivers are near Bankful over in the uh, Copper Basin due to all the rain they've gotten here over the last uh, 24 hours, some cases over an inch <coughs> of rain has fallen there. That's starting to taper off today as well. And also around the Kenai Keys, water levels are pretty high in that area, that area but no uh, advisories of any kind are out, at least at this point. So moving on to fire danger, uh, several areas of uh, barely high fire danger are now existing there north of the Alaska Range, uh, Greater Fairbanks area, the center one there, and then kind of a high fire danger off to the east and also to the southwest, and a little bit more, a little larger area by comparison up there over the upper Yukon Valley, actually has grown a little bit from what it was yesterday, there around the uh, Porcupine and Yukon Rivers. And for satellite imagery, looking at uh, mostly clear, clear and dry conditions. There are some clouds, band of clouds right through here, may produce a shower or two later this afternoon and this evening, but nothing significant. Otherwise, uh, good VFR all along the Arctic coast with the exception of Kaktovik and Barter Island with uh, down to one, two, one and a half miles in fog uh, this afternoon. It may improve here in the next couple of hours, but uh, this area of moisture here, that's what brought all the rain to the uh, upper Tanaw Valley area actually over toward Northway and Toke, and that uh, sliding southward. And there's still some pretty good rainfall amounts occurring today of up to two-thirds of an inch or eight-tenths of an inch falling at a place called Chicken Creek there on the northeast side of the Wrangell Mountains. And uh, the Besna, they'll pick it about two-tenths of an inch. And some of that spilling down into the uh, Valdez area. They've had about five-hundredths of an inch since it started here a few hours ago. Otherwise, uh, dry across the southeast coast. Big area clouds and showers and rain here over Canada that's sliding up to the northwest uh, a little bit, but probably will not come westward like this batch did and bring more heavy rain into the uh, southeast interior areas. Otherwise, we've got a band of clouds here that's uh, really not much of a, well, isn't a per, uh, precipitation producer, kind of just dissipating, bringing clouds into the uh, Kodiak area. Otherwise, partly sunny skies here from Bristol Bay up across the southern Kuskokwim Valley, as well as the uh, Kuskokwim Yukon Deltas inland. Another batch of clouds right through here, uh, bringing more clouds in with, uh, actually brought some rain into Togiak. They had about two tenths of an inch during the day today. Otherwise, uh, dry conditions up across the Seward Peninsula with mostly sunny skies from there up into the northwest valleys and uh, some clouds there, western Arctic coast, but again, all areas were showing VFR flying conditions with uh, pretty high uh, ceilings there. That was about eight to 10,000 feet. Uh, could be some 6,000 foot uh, ceilings in there, but uh, definitely not even uh, reaching the marginal VFR category. Rain and fog here, front right through here roughly, kind of hard to see, a little bit, put, a little bit uh, more of a wind and rain producing than it was yesterday. Uh, bringing uh, some rain throughout the day uh, to the Pribilof Islands, and then uh, about two-thirds of an inch of rain falling today at Falls Pass, and over at King Cove, they picked about four-tenths of an inch, and winds uh, pretty gusty with this as well, gusting 35 miles an hour this afternoon at uh, Port Hyden, also over at Nelson Lagoon, Cold Bay, late this morning, I guess 45 miles an hour, and that all shifting slowly to the northeast, but those winds will diminish as the front weakens as it pushes northeastward into Bristol Bay and toward Kodiak Island tonight. Back to the west, uh, low clouds, fog areas of drizzle, few showers around, but uh, much lighter on the winds and much lighter on the precipitation. And clouds, as you can see, all the way up across the northern Bering Sea into the Bering Strait across St. Lawrence Island. But uh, not any reports that I saw of uh, much in the way of any fog occurring other than along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Thunderstorms starting to break out as temperatures rise into the uh, lower, the mid-70s this afternoon here over the uh, upper 40-mile country. And then 
to a lesser extent, pretty isolated here back to the west. Could see some strikes over the Yukon Delta, Cuscoe Mountain areas uh, this, by later in the afternoon. And again, the shower activity really tapering off over the Panhandle, but did bring some uh, rain today to uh, some of the eastern areas like around Wrangell and Cake, picking up uh, anywhere from two to four tenths of an inch. And for tonight, uh, just be partly and mostly cloudy there for the southeast coast. It'll probably just be uh, socked in with clouds here along the coastline with areas of low clouds and fog, even some drizzle possible, otherwise just isolated showers, mostly along the border or off into Canada with that uh, pretty potent 992 millibar low there up over the Northwest Territories. And uh, isolated showers possible along the North Gulf Coast, isolated thunderstorms diminishing, mostly along the Alaska Range, and uh, otherwise fair, light winds, very, uh, mostly clear skies here from the upper Yukon Valley back toward Kotzebue Sand, the Seward Peninsula. Not bad in the North Slope as well. Look for some clearing to continue. And the Arctic Coast uh, east side, best chance of seeing some low clouds and fog and IFR, just maybe marginal at worst there for the west side. And could be a little bit of drizzle possibly around St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, this front uh, bringing a band of rain right up to the southwest coast here. Light rain, winds uh, probably in that 15 to 20, maybe gusts 25 mile per hour range. The strongest winds at uh, Cape Newenham. Otherwise, rain and fog and uh, a little bit of an increase in the southeast winds for Kodiak Island. And then the winds turn more south-southwest behind the front, but uh, a couple of troughs swinging around. It's going to keep it uh, pretty unsettled and damp there from the Alaska Peninsula across the eastern Aleutians on out to Adak and Atka. And then farther back to the west, uh, improving conditions, but still a lot of uh, clouds and probably some uh, good fog around Shumianat too. Could get as little as half mile in fog overnight tonight. And then the outlook for uh, tomorrow, <clears throat> again, isolated showers, same pattern for the Panhandle over toward the border. Low clouds, fog, drizzle, central south coast, uh, possible IFR as well. A few showers around Yakutat, and again, some isolated to maybe scattered thunderstorms developing along this trough axis here that's uh, in the uh, Tanana Valley there from these, uh, and extends back toward the Kobuk Valley. Could see a few, a few isolated showers there tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, mostly sunny, again, upper Yukon Valley to the eastern Arctic coast. North Slope looking really good, as well as the central and western Arctic coast with light winds and some uh, fair amounts of sunshine. Sun breaking out here over the southwest interior, but this front uh, keeping a band of rain in from Nunavak Island across the Bethel area and Cuscoquam Bay, on down to Dillingham, into King Salmon, and rain into Iliamna, maybe reaching the southern Kenai Peninsula. Otherwise, partly sunny, Cook Inlet, Madnuska Valley, North Gulf Coast. Isolated showers at best here, and rain, fog, drizzle, showers from the Alaska Peninsula improve a little bit here to the west and scatter out around Adak and Atka, and then just clouds and fog with light winds from about Amchitgon out to the Commodorskis. And for the outlook on Wednesday, uh, continue weakening low. Not much of a gradient around that center at all, 996 millibars, just a couple of troughs rotating around the center, like, like a, uh, at a tangent to the center there. That'll keep some shower threats in around Kodiak Island. This front lifts north, so it brings a chance of rain, mostly to the southern and eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula. Western Prince William Sound, less of a chance, say, for Western Cook Inlet from Anchor Point on up to uh, Palmer, including Anchorage. Uh, Alaska Range looks pretty good for some rain, less of a threat in the Cuscombe Valley, and then chance of rain across the Yukon Cuscombe Delta. Widespread area of uh, low uh, uh, precipitation of either light rain, fog, or drizzle, or heavy dew, also for the eastern Aleutians. So that uh, usually means IFR flying conditions there with uh, maybe a little bit of improvement to the west. Southeast coast, partly sunny to maybe mostly sunny. Showers mostly over toward the border. Isolated thunderstorms developing again in the interior over the, uh, along that trough near, near the White Mountains and then back to the northwest there into the uh, Noatak Valley area. Otherwise, the North Slope and Arctic Coast still looking good with uh, mostly clear skies. Maybe a little bit of an increase in those easterly winds there for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Low temperatures for tomorrow, upper 40s, lower 50s to a big swath here from the upper Yukon Valley all the way down into uh, Nikolai and McGrath, upper 40s for the southwest coast, mid to upper 30s for the Arctic coast, up 31 to Kaktovik, and upper 40s to lower 50s 
southeast and south central Alaska with the panhandle right around 50. Highs for tomorrow, upper 50s to lower 60s for the southeast coast. Uh, nice uh, mid 70s forecast around the uh, Fairbanks area like today. Some areas reaching 80 degrees this afternoon. Probably see the same thing tomorrow. Lower 70s for Bettles and Tanana, as well as Eagle, near 70 back to the west in the Kobuk Valley, 64 the forecast high for Kotzebue, and 40s out over the Bering Sea and the uh, Lucians, Arctic Coast uh, 45 to 50. And for the lows the following morning, uh, no change up there for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, and upper 40s to lower 50s here, Central Interior, pretty mild back out toward Kotzebue, low 51, and uh, upper 40s, lower 50s. South Central Alaska, no change to the panhandle. For the highs, the following day on Wednesday, not much of a change here for the panhandle. Soon the upper 50s to lower 60 range. And in the 70s, lower to mid here, maybe 76, 7 again in some areas on the central interior. And 65 to 70 for the Susitna Valley, otherwise 60s uh, for the Kenai Peninsula, 50s Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, near 60, upper 40s out over the Aleutians. Uh, as well as the Pribla, it's a little cooler for St. Lawrence Island there around lower 40s, possible fog, as well as uh, 62 around Kotzebue. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to uh, flying weather for Tuesday morning. We've got a lot of VFR here in the interior and out uh, to the coast and beyond here. You can see, but to marginal VFR, St. Lawrence Island, north shore through the Bering Strait, narrow band there up, and then some widespread IFR that's uh, mostly off of the coastline up there. Brooks Range looking good, marginal VFR along the Alaska Range, even some IFR uh, developing early on, mostly down toward, and, or down toward uh, Iliamna, or the southern range there. Lots of IFR here, Alaska Peninsula, all of the Aleutians up into the southern and so southern Bering Sea, central Bering Sea too and the Pribilofs, IFR along the North Gulf Coast into the uh, Wrangell Mountains, Eastern Copper River Basin, Eastern Panhandle, otherwise marginal, and tomorrow afternoon, uh, still IFR over toward er the border there, marginal VFR for the remainder of the area, Gulf, marginal, and uh, mostly marginal VFR here, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, into the Kenai Peninsula to maybe the Chugach Mountains, possibly uh, the Talkeetnas, and that's just a chance. IFR, east side of Kodiak Island, south side of the Alaska Peninsula. A little more broken up out here over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And some IFR sitting right along the northwest coast, or the western Arctic coast. And for Wednesday morning, that area is still persisting up there. Otherwise, VFR, central, eastern, Beaufort Sea coast, north slope, across the Brooks Range, central interior, all the way down to the Cuscom Delta. Smarzel VFR still hung up along the Alaska Range with IFR now on the uh, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, Lake Clark Merrill Passes, on down the Aleutian Range there on the uh, upslope side, and uh, still were pretty well socked in there for the eastern, central, western Aleutians northward to the Pribilofs, and uh, IFR still persisting there over the eastern part of the southeast coast, and then that uh, dissipates in the afternoon, but marginal VFR everywhere else, North Gulf Coast, VFR over the interior, northward to the uh, Arctic coast there. And uh, Yukon Delta VFR, Cuscombe Delta kind of on the edge there, marginal VFR into the uh, Auckland Kilbrook Mountains. Kodiak Island marginal, Alaska Peninsula marginal. And IFR sort of dissipating a little bit here, but hanging tough near Nikolsky, Adak, Yatka, and over the Perbolof Islands. And moving on to the passes, both Anatovic and Adigan. We'll see VFR flying conditions tomorrow as uh, Lake Clark and Merrill will be trending downward, especially on the uh, eastern entrance there, that uh, southeast flow increasing. So VFR trending toward marginal VFR in the afternoon. Rainy though, you see the increase in the clouds, but it'll stay VFR the entire day. Windy VFR. And for Isabel, optimistically VFR. Afternoon showers around, but uh, VFR showers will be. And Mentesta, same thing, chance of a thunderstorm. Uh, otherwise, VFR. And Tanita looks VFR. As Portage starts out marginal, becoming VFR probably by mid to late morning. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. 
Freezing levels showing 6,000 feet covering much of Alaska here from oh, the northern Cook Inlet area and Copper River Basin on out to St. Lawrence Island north to off the Arctic coast. 8,000 feet trying to poke in but not quite making it there, uh, mostly over the Yukon. And 6,000 feet out over the bearing, uh, out over the bearing here uh, about sums it up, so not much of a gradient temperature-wise aloft here across the state, but icing, areas of light to isolated moderate rime icing here, uh, very isolated moderate along the uh, Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, spreading up into Kamishak Bay, also here over the west central interior, and another batch here along the uh, Kuskokwim Delta on out to Nunavak Island, otherwise icing free everywhere else. Look at the jet stream. Well south, 33,000 foot wind flow chart here shows a jet well south of the forecast area here, except for this northerly branch coming down at about 50 knots, 9,000 feet. Southeasterly is 25 to 30, lighter up over the eastern and northeast interior. Westerly is up to 25 in the pan, and northerly is 25 to 30. Same thing at 3,000 feet. Southeast flow, 25 to 30, light winds over the pan, east 5 to 15 in the interior. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop here. Blows 5,000 feet, Alaska Peninsula, along the southwest coast there, and up around St. Lawrence Island. Kodiak Island also looks up like you'll see occasional moderate chop, uh, especially for small aircraft. And after the break, I will return with a look at the marine forecasts. So today we are surveying doll sheep in the park. Now I see a couple ewes and lambs. Oh, they're frolicking, it's so cute. We get out the scope, we get out the optics, try to count, you know, really, you know, oh, is that a, is that a ewe with kind of largish horns or is that a young male, you know? Trying to make those finer distinctions to make our data as accurate as possible. You said you only see three, I thought I, thought I saw four in there too. Specifically trying to get, as best we can, a sense of how many lambs there are uh, per 100 ewes is the standard measurement. Yeah, I'd probably call that a yearling. Which is basically looking at kind of how's the reproductive success. My name is Michael Raffaelli. I'm a jack of all trades in the National Park Service. I'm Kaya Clotter, and today at least I'm a wildlife technician. I feel like until I get the master's, I don't know that I can quite full out say I'm a wildlife biologist. <laughs> I grew up in Palmer, Alaska. One thing I really discovered when I was living in Lower 48, which is what we call the rest of the country, <laughs> um, was that everywhere felt just like a little bit claustrophobic to me. And I've always identified as a Californian, you know, and you hear people that move here, and it's like, well, how long do you have to be here to be in Alaska? And, and I'm, I, still, I, I say I live in Alaska, you know, I think that's the way to say it. I live here now, and um, that transition has been interesting. And I don't know what it would be like to go back to California. I think that's where when I talk to people, they say, oh, that's the harder transition because all of a sudden you realize everything that, that's so important. You know, for me, it's the open space that I can look out my window and see for miles and know that there's no roads and that we have these wild areas. Actually, part of the reason that this park was initially formed was that uh, people were seeing you know, the, the large numbers of sheep here, that it was really good habitat. Charles Sheldon was a, a hunter. That's what originally drew him up here to Alaska. Those sheep were being hunted not only for a couple of specimens, but people were coming in potentially decimating the population. Especially with market hunting as the area was being developed, the railroad, a lot of them were, were being killed to feed those camps. Him seeing that and saying, wait a second, we're not gonna have these sheep in the future unless we do something about it now. It was ultimately the power of his passion and he affected somebody else and that affected somebody else and that affected somebody else to ultimately create a huge national park that hundreds of thousands of people come to visit every year. I feel lucky to, to have that opportunity to go out and, and take the time to look at them even if they are just little white dots and remember what those little white dots represent. His first trip of course, you know, where we were hiking, um, is, is where he shot his first sheep, was on, on Cathedral Mountain. 
Obviously the park is much too large to effectively ground survey all of it. I mean, it's six million acres, it's just not gonna happen. So basically, you know, what they wanna do is say, okay, we're gonna look at kind of a subsample, see what that number looks like. And groups divide up hiking in groups of two or three people and walk around surveying the area that's likely sheep habitat. You know, these canyons are so steep and, and twisted that, you know, your one vantage point might be all you ever get. But with the binoculars, you know, just happen to see on the ridge line looking, oh, a couple of white dots that I probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise, and sure enough, end up being another nursery group. We're on the south part of Cathedral Mountain right now, which um, is very sheepy. There's, I mean, the steep terrain, which they like, but there's also, you know, enough vegetation that they can be feeding on that. Nothing has space anything like Alaska does. Um, and that's, to me, that's a really special feeling. And it's a little bit of a paradoxical feeling because I know that me being here enjoying it is, is one person making that space just a little bit smaller. Um, but I hope that places like Denali are able to facilitate people's interactions with wild areas in ways that aren't very destructive. The parks and the park service kind of, they're that piece that we have to keep asking ourselves, is this important to us? And, and we have to continually answer that. And it's important that every generation engages in those discussions. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis just finished here Monday afternoon, showing uh, ice pretty much east to west here, the edge, the outer edge of the uh, pack ice there from uh, just off the coast here, and around Point Lay on off to the east. And not a lot of change expected here over the next several days in the conditions. So moving on to the coastal water forecasts, you can see we've got westerly winds here all along the coast, strongest on the south coast, 15 to 20 knots, with seas only 3 to 4 feet, 15 knots fall back to 10 knots there in the north coast with 3 foot seas. Small craft advisory uh, out for Lincoln out tomorrow, south 25, 5 foot seas, Stevens Passage 15 from the south and northwest 15 for Clarence Strait. And for the outlook Wednesday, lighter winds here for the south coast from the south southwest at 10 with 5 foot seas. 10 knot winds also for Clarence Strait, and South 15 for Stevens Passage, coming down a little bit, at least under the small craft advisory threshold there for Lynn Canal with 20 knot winds. Southeast up to 20 there for the North Coast. And for Prince William Sound, Southeast, 10 knots, seas two feet. Pretty light winds here for the North Gulf Coast as well, out of the east at 10. Southeast 15, increase to 25 knots for the Barren Islands and small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay. Uh, out of the east to 30 knots, seas up to 9 feet, but uh, southern Cook Inlet, all of Cook Inlet, east at 10 with 2 foot seas. Then northeast 15, northern Cook Inlet, turned northerly at 20 knots, uh, south of the Forelands. 30 knot winds persisting here from the Barren Islands, uh, right on into Kamishak Bay, and also winds increasing for the North Gulf Coast, small craft advisories for Wednesday, out of the east at 25 with 8 to 9 foot seas. Northeast 15 for Prince William Sound. Shelikoff Strait, small craft advisories, east 25. Southeast 20 here, east side of Kodiak Island, all the way down to Castle Cape. Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, south at 15. Southeast 20 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. And a good stiff east wind at 30 knots in store for Bristol Bay with five foot seas. Those fall back uh, considerably down to 15 out of the southeast for Wednesday. South 15 here back to the west and south side of the peninsula, southwest 20 up to Castle Cape to Sitkanak, south at 15, 20 knot winds there, the east side of Kodiak from the south and southeast for Shelikoff Strait. Fox Islands, west southwest, 20 knots, seas running 4 to maybe 9 feet there, and out toward Adak and Atka, a westerly breeze at 20 with uh, 6 to 8 foot seas, 15 to 20 knot winds here, especially the 15 or 15 knot winds there west of Kiska and uh, those seas down to uh, six to seven feet. And then on Wednesday, west 15 here, again, west of Kiska, Amchika to Adak and Atka, northwest, 20 to 25 knots, with seas six feet, 
And for the Fox Islands, uh, west to northwest or southwest at 15 to 20 with four to eight foot seas. The southwest coast, we've got uh, small craft advisories out for tomorrow here. East winds, 25 knots, seas 6 to 7 feet, northeast 20 for both the Pervolofs and St. Matthew Island zones. And St. Lawrence Island, northeast 15, Norton Sound east at 15. Then for Wednesday, uh, just uh, barely a breeze there at all, east at 10 for Norton Sound and northeast 15. St. Lawrence Island right on down to Nunavak Island, south of uh, the island there, east at 15, and then south 10 for the Pervolofs, north 15 for St. Matthew Island. And for the uh, Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow, uh, 15 knots out of the east all the way across with uh, seas here at about two feet, and then uh, down to uh, Cape Thompson, southeast at 10, Cape Thompson and two whales, north at 15. Outlook for Wednesday, light northerly winds here for the Chukchi Sea. Easterlies, 20 knots now, so picking up a little bit there for the Arctic coast, and uh, all the way over to Demarcation Point. Then for tonight, dry and mostly clear over the northern and central interior, even the north slope, but look for low clouds and fog, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and diminishing showers continue to wind down here over the Copper River Basin along the North Gulf Coast, especially northeast Prince William Sound, and chance of thunderstorms this evening around the Denali area back uh, to the northwest a little bit. Rain moves into Kodiak Island, and that area of light rain pushes up into Bristol Bay and along the southwest coast. Stays uh, cloudy, damp, and unsettled here for the Pervolof Islands with uh, fog at times down to the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians and isolated showers for the panhandle, flow clouds and fog along the central and south coast. And that pattern holds through tomorrow as well for the panhandle, partly sunny, south central Alaska, north Gulf Coast, and on Wednesday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. I loved Ken Burns' series on the Civil War. It was deeply impacting. I love history. To have those stories told through these letters, through stories of love, 